Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I'm a health coach, I'm a nurse, and family nurse practitioner student graduating so soon. Can't wait. I am doing another, what was that Jackson? <laughs> I'm doing another what I eat in a day focusing on the Mediterranean diet way of eating. I'm gonna leave a link to a blog post down below that I'm gonna write, which really you know, goes into detail about the Mediterranean diet, why I think it's so beneficial, but it is the diet has, that has been most studied for its anti-inflammatory benefits and its work on preventing chronic illnesses, especially like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So all that to say that the Mediterranean diet obviously has many variations in the Mediterranean region. There are many countries and different cultures, so the traditional diet is not going to be the same everywhere. So the way I interpret it is based on traditional diets and then what I learn from research. So there you have it. Diet is primarily based on plant-based foods. Your vegetables, your fruits, nuts, seeds, whole grains if you enjoy them, and lots and lots of extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Moderate consumption of fish, dairy products, and other lean meats and eggs, and then minimal consumption of red meats, processed foods, and sugars. The theme for today's Mediterranean diet, what I eat in a day video, is kind of like what I eat on a busier day. So all these meals are gonna be pretty quick to come together, use lots of pantry items, using leftovers. I am working from home today, which I know many people are right now, um, but you could easily pack all of these foods or meal prep them, whatever you wanted to do. I'm health coaching all day today from home, so I am kind of busy. I'm sneaking in some schoolwork when I can. Let's get on to breakfast. This is my breakfast situation. I'm starting with a, like a cereal bowl size full of just plain sheep's milk yogurt. I found this sheep milk yogurt at my local Kroger. Try and find this if this is something you're interested in, but it has really good ingredients, it's plain and not sweetened. Sheep milk yogurt is really, really high in nutrients and it's actually 36% higher in calcium compared to goat and um, cow's milk. So if calcium is something you're interested in or trying to get more of, sheep milk might be a great option for you and some find that it digests better than cow's milk. That's what I always like to start my day with is some kind of good protein source. So in addition to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of hemp hearts, one tablespoon of flax seeds. Both of these um, are high in fiber, omega-3s, and in protein. Just gonna pour that on. I'm gonna attempt to make this bowl pretty. My mom actually made me this granola and I'm trying to, I think it's got like dried cranberries in it. I see some pumpkin seeds, some oats obviously, and um, some quinoa. I think, you know, when people make things for you, they're, they're baked with love or cooked with love. And I think there's just some like good juju in that. It's important to share food and enjoy that emotional piece of it. I always have produce. So my meals, I'm always looking for where is my protein coming from? Where is my healthy source of fat? Where is my fiber? And where is my produce or source of phytochemicals and antioxidants? And that is gonna be from these frozen blueberries. I'm obsessed with frozen blueberries. I've also been doing a lot of chopped apple cause it is fall right now and I just, I love um, chopped apple and yogurt with lots and lots of cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. Oh, it's so good. So here is my breakfast bowl. So you could easily pack the night before, add the blueberries the night before, or if you like them nice and frozen like I do, you could add them in the morning, take it in a mason jar or some kind of glass container, and it's ready to go. back in the kitchen because it is now lunchtime. I just snuck in a quick Peloton workout, which is my cheeks are a little rosy right now. A uh, quick shower and I've got less than 15 minutes before I'm back to work. Going to whip up a lunch that's super easy because it's leftovers. And this is not me getting out of making a Mediterranean lunch. 
But honestly, it's very traditional. They cook, you know, a beautiful dinner with lots of vegetables, and there's always, you know, typically some leftover, and they never let anything go to waste. So last night, we made Greek-style potatoes and shrimp. I had green beans and potatoes. We ate all of the shrimp from the meal, but there were a lot of potatoes and green beans and the tomato sauce left over. So I saved it, and what I'm going to do is cook it just over medium heat in a pan with some olive oil. I'm gonna crack two pasture-raised eggs that I get from a local farm in. I'm gonna cover it and let the eggs cook and steam in the tomato sauce and the vegetables. So it's kind of like a shakshuka, like that was kind of my inspiration for it. Oh, I think it's gonna be really good. Top it with some pepper, salt, some red pepper flakes. And I have some leftover dill. There was dill um, that went in the recipe, so I have leftover dill. I always buy one fresh herb a week. If I buy dill, I, I try to use dill in a lot of recipes that week, or a bunch of parsley or cilantro. I have thyme and chives growing in uh, my yard out back, so just adding some like pop of you know fresh green, even if you. Um, are using leftovers is a great way to like spice things up adding like a squeeze of lemon juice it's very like mediterranean way to sneak even more antioxidants and phytonutrients and just make you enjoy your meal more and feel good about what you're having let's make this lunch <laughs> just have my pan heating up here i'm going to add a little bit of olive oil i use this trader joe's greek kalamata extra virgin olive oil it tastes really good and it's oh i almost need i'm gonna need more soon And here is the finished product. Now, if I was taking this to work, I probably would have kept the leftover vegetables in their glass container and just heated them up in a microwave. I probably would have taken two or three hard boiled eggs with me and just kind of ate them separately. But since I'm home and I was able to cook them together, this is what we've got. And now I'm just going to top it with some red pepper flakes. because I like a little spice, some dill. and a little bit of goat cheese. So you can omit it if you wanna keep it dairy free. It's like with the sheep milk, it just has a different, you know, nutrition profile from cow's milk and it actually has less lactose. So many people digest it better. There we go. dinner time. Well, it's not quite dinner time, but it's time for me to start getting dinner ready. I just fed the dogs, work is done, time for dinner. So I just wanted to quickly show you what we're going to be having tonight. It's a really quick and easy meal, but full of Mediterranean diet inspired ingredients. So let me show you. I love getting this frozen wild pink salmon. I get it at Kroger, obviously. Three pieces, each have one and then split one. So I'm just waiting for these to completely thaw and then I rinse them under water and I'm gonna saute those in a pan. And then to go with our salmon, we are going to have the acorn squash and arugula salad. Look at this acorn squash that I got from my CSA box. It's like two in one. So it'll be interesting to see how I cut through this. A big part of the Mediterranean diet is a focus on local and seasonal foods. If you have a farm that does a CSA near you or a farmer's market, um, or just you know check at the grocery store and see what's uh, local or in season, I highly recommend doing that. The vegetables have more nutrients and they taste better. So I'm gonna chop up this acorn squash, roast it in the oven, and it's gonna go on top of an arugula salad with balsamic dressing. In case you're curious, we probably have fish at least once a week, if not more. Like last night we had shrimp, and then tonight we're having salmon. That's honestly not typical typically it's usually just like one seafood thing a week but on the Mediterranean diet seafood is 
you know, recommended in a moderate amount. And I often have canned uh, wild salmon or canned skipjack tuna or canned sardines. You guys have seen me eat my sardines all the time for lunch. So I, it's not like something I count or um, am super mindful of. I just enjoy seafood you know, moderately. I just always pick the kind that is most sustainable and um, budget friendly. I ended up putting it in the microwave for five or six minutes um, just to soften up the skin so that I could get my knife through it. It just was such a fresh acorn squash and obviously like two in one. So even my good knife needed a little help and I didn't feel like cutting myself. So yeah, you can stick it in the microwave for a few minutes just to soften it up. Get the seeds out, chop it up into probably like a half an inch pieces and then toss it with some olive oil, salt and pepper, throw it in the oven. I've got my oven at 400 and I'll probably do like 20, 25 minutes and check it until it's nice and golden and delicious. Some olive oil and some butter melting in my all clad skillet. I've got my salmon here. I just season them with some roasted garlic seasoning salt and some black pepper. Now the skillet is sizzling, I'm gonna go ahead and add the salmon. I'll probably do four minutes on the first side and maybe two minutes on the second side. 